is uh, April 15th. run out of um, injectable testosterone so what that means is uh, everybody has to switch to a, a different form so they're trying to get everybody to switch to uh, using a patch or a, a gel form of testosterone I've managed to get the actual last bottle of injectable testosterone in Canada um, from my, lo my local pharmacy, so that's an advantage, um, but uh, the next prescription I have to renew in about a month and uh, it's still not available according to um, Dr. Bain's office on University, uh, which is located in a hospital and he's been prescribing this for a very long time, so he should be on the, the quick list. Um, my doctors have come into Sherborne to renew it, because they would probably get it before other places, like local pharmacies. Um, what else has changed? Um, I find that I often get mistaken for a gay man. Um, maybe I'm still not passing, I don't know. I'm passing as a male, but as a gay man, so um, that's kind of tricky. And I got called ma'am once yesterday uh, in a coffee shop, and I asked why uh, she had mistaken me. And, uh, she said it was because of my hair, and I changed my hair for video. Um, so, and it did happen less often with my other hair color, so maybe that's the reason why, but um, I was still with the other hair color mistaken for uh, a gay male, so uh, I don't know how to change that other than um, well, what I've done is uh, bought clothes that I think look good on me, so trying to present as more well off, I guess. Um, so my immediate assumption is to not dress as nicely, um, to look more uh, poor, to, for lack of a better term. Um, so maybe I'll try playing with that. I don't know. The, uh, I did get my name change forms back, finally, um, that took eight and a half months. Um, I still yet to take them into a uh, licensing office and health card and all that. Um, another thing is I got the uh, trans funding at York, so I have a grant for um, $6,780 to pay for surgery, and I've been put on a rush list for, for surgery. Um, so the surgery will like, happen uh, April 26th, and that's for um, double mastectomy. Um, I have a pre-op on Tuesday, it's now Sunday. So in two days I have pre-op over the phone, and then in uh, about a week, um, two weeks, I have uh, surgery coming up. So that's pretty exciting. I didn't think that would happen for several years because it's so expensive. Um, so I, my thanks goes out to York. I'm trying to think of anything else has changed. Nothing much. I'm doing 150 cc every 13, 12 to 13 days, 12 to 14 days. Um, decided to go down a bit. I'm really aware of losing my hair. Um, I'm also uh, kind of
uh, hindered uh, thinking, I'm thinking I should go back up because of other aspects that change, but I don't want to lose all my hair, so it's kind of, uh, I seem to be passing alright, so, and the voice is fine. Um, but it kind of, um, there's other aspects that concern me, so, um, I'm, I'm debating, I may play with that a little. I know shifting from 10 to CC up and down isn't, isn't much. Um, like when I first started it was 50 and I noticed it's a huge change. So I'm not sure if I should um, dose up another 50 CC. And it'd be interesting to try. But um, I'm not sure if I want to do that and um, have that extreme jump again, so I think I'm gonna maybe hover around where I'm at, maybe increase a bit, maybe go down a bit, you know, see the changes that happen, and um, slide down. Um, what else? Um, I asked for my chromosome makeup from Dr. Bain. Um, and I asked my doctor at Sherborne to ask for the results. Um, as it turns out, he did not do that test, and that was kind of the whole reason I went. I didn't go for hormone testing, I went for um, chro chromosome makeup, which takes uh, three or four months to analyze and get back. Um, he refused to do the test, apparently. Or for God, or it just wasn't important to him. Um, but that was the whole reason I went and uh, went through the two-hour interview he gave me, going through the whole Harry Benjamin standards of care with me, um, questioning me, and uh, and he failed to. Which the whole process really upset me, and then he failed to do the test. So uh, I'm pretty frustrated with a. Uh, endocrinologist who's so well known for doing uh, gender research can overlook uh, a patient request for the, the only reason I'm going in is for that test result. Um, so it's pretty frustrating to set up that appointment and like wait for three months to get it and then uh, call in about the results and be told that it's three or four months to process and then not hear anything back, and then when I do contact him, he didn't do the test. So it's pretty frustrating. Um, I don't recommend going to him, because um, he doesn't listen, and um, he assumes that you want a uh, hormone injection from him, and I told him up front that I'm not getting it from him, I'm getting it from my doctor. Um, any doctor can prescribe this treatment, and that I didn't need that from him. So. Doing the whole interview, two hours, um, was unnecessary because I was not getting, I didn't ask for hormone treatment from him, so, um, it's really annoying. So I may go to a different endocrinologist, um, Dr. Fung, and, um, I may have, uh, Dr. Fung do the, um, chromosome testing to see what the results are. I'm sure it's uh, uh, normal for my biology, but um, I'm just curious and uh, I would like to see, um, I have a document with those results on it. Um, so that may be something in the future I'll pursue. Right now I'm more focused on school and trying to finish up my academic courses. Um, if anything, I would say uh, being in academia, it's the same kind of stuff you would hear in uh, like a regular social circle that's not academia. Um, I find this disappointing that the, the current uh, trans theory, queer theory, academia is not um, forward thinking. Uh, it's quite disappointing, so I'm considering um, maybe getting into academia and write some forward-thinking books because um, they don't exist. I've read uh, three or four 
contemporary theory books written in the past year, and um, they, these books could have written, be written in the 80s or the early 90s. Um, so that's a bit um, discouraging in the way of education, because um, it's not available, and the undergrad or, or regular texts that they would teach, um, keeping in mind these, these texts I'm reading are for a, a self-directed study, so I design the program that I'm taking. Um, and I would say that uh, regular coursework is even more dated. They're reading texts that are written in um, anywhere from the, the 90s, 92 I would guess, to about uh, 2006, and it's now 2013. Um, so it's quite dated, the, the work that they're reading. This is at the, the upper level, so it just diffuses through society to to enforce stereotypes that are uh, currently in place. Um, and that's in the, the stereotypical general public. Um, I would say that there is a, a, a subculture that's uh, more aware or open, but. Um, Way of the general populace, it's, it's not available. Um, I've been involved in a group that uh, would go and educate uh, students for a one day, three hour workshop on, on awareness and trans rights and uh, stigmatisms and why they're in place and, and how things travel down the line. Um, but it should be mandatory for all medical students, all I, I think the whole populace of any educational system should put in place a non-judgmental, non-stereotypical, um, bias-based um, workshop of how not to be biased and how not to be stereotypical and uh, judgmental. So basically an ethics class, I think it should be mandatory. Um, that doesn't matter. So, whatever you learn, whatever you get taught is what's available. And, uh, it's not much, so it's a bit disappointing. I've gotten in contact again with a friend of mine uh, that I hadn't talked to. Um, and it seems to be the same kind of him expecting me to contact him. So, uh, it makes me feel kind of. I'm not worth contacting, right? So it's a bit frustrating to get him to see that point of view. So um, I left him a message this morning saying, uh, okay, like I contacted you, so it's now your turn. He expected me to contact him and then set up a like hanging out time. But um, I'm going to leave it with him and see if he does anything. Because he's never really said, okay, I want to be your friend or I'm glad you so I'm not, it's a bit egotistical to say, oh, he obviously should want to be my friend because I'm a nice person and I'm cool, but um, I want him to say it. Like, I don't need him to say it, but like, I want to know from him that he feels that. And I never experienced him feel, uh, tell me that, so. Uh, aware that he might didn't say it, but the way I left the message, I did say that, hey, I want to be a friend, and do you want to say it? So, it's just very basic stuff that's being overlooked. 